Okay, so today's lesson is on factorising and it's type 4 and this is the difference of two squares. Now the word difference you've met before, if I said what is the difference between 7 and 5, the answer would be 2. So the word difference in this sense is talking about subtraction. Okay, so our first example here is factorise x squared minus y squared. And you will notice that this is a difference of two squares because number one, it's got a subtraction here, so the difference. And number two is it's actually got squares here. So this is what we refer to as the difference of two squares. All right, and I follow a really simple method here. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to look at my numbers, or my letters in this case, and I'm going to write down the perfect square of them. So the perfect square means what times what will give me x squared. And so the answer is x by x, x squared. Minus what by what will give me the perfect square for y squared, and that is y to be squared. Okay, once I've done that, I lay out my answer as follows. The difference of two squares always has two back-to-back -back brackets. One is a plus and one is a minus. And then within it, I'm going to write the two examples of the perfect square. So what by what gives me x squared? And the answer is x. And what by what will give me y squared? And the answer is y. So the factorization of x squared minus y squared is x plus y and x minus y. So you will always have the same thing in brackets except a different sign. And it doesn't matter which you put first, you can put a plus a minus, you can put a minus plus, because our commutative laws will mean that we will get the same answer no matter what way we multiply it out. All right, we'll have a look at another example. Okay, example number two, p squared minus 36. So again, we need to spot, is this a difference of two squares? And so the first thing is, is it does contain the minus, which is what we wanted. And the second thing is, does it contain square numbers? Well, p squared is already a square number, but 36 can be a square number. We can write that as, any ideas? We can write it as 6 squared. So I can now write this, sign, or this sum as 2 p squared minus 6 to be squared. Again, what gives me p squared? So it's p all to be squared minus 6 all to be squared. And lay my answer out as follows. My two back to back brackets, one a plus, one a minus. And p times p gives me p squared. So p here. And 6 times 6 will give me 36. And so my answer is p plus 6, p minus 6. That's the factorization of this example here. So the thing we had to look for this in this case was we had to write 36 as a perfect square, which was 6 squared, and then use that answer to create this. Okay, so our next example here is 49m squared minus 9n squared. So first things first is I've spotted the minus, so that's leading me to think that it might be a difference of two squares. And then I can spot that 49 and 9 are square numbers. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this now as 7m all to be squared, because that will give me... 49m squared minus 3n all to be squared because 3n squared will give me 9n squared. Okay, and then I lay out my factorization as follows my two back to back brackets, one a plus, one a minus, and what by what gives me 49m squared and it is 7m. So 7m by 7m. And then again here, we are focusing on the second part here. So the minus n squared, sorry, minus 9n squared as a perfect square was 3n all to be squared. And so now that'll be the second part of our answer. So 3n and a minus 3n. Okay, and we have factorized that question there. Okay, so we finished the lesson off with a quick learning check. Three sums here, 9m squared minus 1. 25x squared minus 36y squared 
49a squared minus 16b squared. So you've spotted the minus, you should have also spotted that each of these are square numbers. Um, so you're going to follow the rules for factorising, you're going to factorise by the method of the difference of two squares.